Margaret Ross Talbert. Margaret Ross Talbert earned her BFA and MFA here at UF. Her art making reflects her wonder as a planetary traveler. And we are so lucky that she is home based here. Since the 70s, Margaret has filled our community with iconic images of our exotic springs. Giant experiential paintings big enough to jump into. She's been a hero for many local artists, including me. Through her imaginings, we have also on very rare occasions glimpsed the ethereal actions of Sirena at play in her beloved springs. In 2010, Margaret released her, her award-winning book, Aquafarious, 12 Florida Springs with Art and Narrative. Aquafarius surprised and delighted many, taking the portrayal of our Springs region to all new artistic depths, with art and writing by Talbert, who collaborated with 13 contributors. This stunning book documents the urgent need for the preservation of Florida's freshwater springs and the Floridan aquifer. Aquafarius received a double recognition from the Florida Book Awards, one for Florida nonfiction and the second for fine arts. It deserves both. Please help me welcome Margaret Ross Talbert. I'm very happy to be here. Thank you for coming out. Thank you, Florida's Eden, for bringing this about. This all of, uh, with so many colleagues that I really admire and we're all stirred around in the Petri dish just the way I like it in Gainesville. So, so there's, there's a shot of the Ichitutni. Well, I'm really happy to be here and I want to, be, before I launch into my, my visuals, I want to also thank um, Tom Morris, Mark Long, Daniel Smallberg, and Jared Ryle design genius for helping me with these things. I am um, very happy as well to see several contributors to Aquafarius here. Yay, raise your hands. And um, I'm, I'm, I'm always thrilled with that book and it's, just the, it's ever a reminder of the way um, the contributors' ideas pretty much set my hair on fire every time I think about it. And uh, it's, it's, it's been a wonderful experience. And also, Jack Davis is here. Did I talk to you about Aquafarius before it was Aquafarius, and before I even had met Bill Belville? So, um, I wanted to. I'm an artist who writes, and um, this is a. I thought you might want to watch this Eye of the Aquifer. By it's. This is just a shot. This, Tom Morris did this footage, as he went into this little cave off the Swanee River. So um, I'm an artist who writes, and I paint the springs of North Florida to express the feeling of being that one has in the springs. It's more of a sense of being for me than any other way. Um, and the book, as you know about aquifers, Ferris being art, science, and springs. And um, I was talking to um, Leslie Gamble about Italo Calvino's stories in Cosmic Comics. And there is a wonderful story where everyone in the earth goes to a certain point on the earth and the moon gets so close that you can put up a ladder and go to the moon. And I was thinking, this is fantastic. This is so great. And then I was thinking about, you know, I bet many columned Iram as an image of paradise for people started with someone's experience of one palace or passage. I bet one oasis, one small episode led to someone's idea of paradise as a of land of many fountains. And then I thought, moon we don't need to put a ladder to the moon we have the aquifer we here alone in many places of the world we can go down the ladder to the aquifer i mean we live in the magical place that is this should be the center of or is the center of, of so much writing and writing talent around here and i'm kind of stalling here because i was hoping you might see something when the e it's like there's an eel's point of view isn't it he kind of starts looking out of the cave. And um, I'll switch it soon. Uh -huh. 
you don't know you can hear this just like breathing in the bubbles did anything go by yet <laughs> yeah there you never know what you'll see in the springs do you now yeah Well, okay. All right, well, uh, so every now and then you glimpse Serena. Um, okay, so I thought that here, you know, here we are, big paintings. I'm doing big paintings and Orlando Airport installation about the springs. Um, here's the Aquafarius cover with Gilchrist Blue Springs and one of the pages in it. And then besides um, continuing to explore art in the springs here, I'm working on a film on springs in Turkey called Sue about the waters. And this is some of the sort of storyboards for that and some of the sketches. But you know, I'm, I, I wanted to also show you that, you know, I don't always do sketches for paintings. Writing helps me in other ways. I'm trying to like, these are my writing colleagues here, so I have to talk about writing. <laughs> I better write something. So, so anyway, I can't always, I don't do sketches for Springs paintings, unlike the other work I do. So I have to, the way I do the sketches for Springs paintings is I write. So I write, here I'm trying to draw, Mark Long took this photo of me trying to draw some, a turtle at Silver Glen Springs. But this is the sketchbook, and this is how I record the impressions. And then I read these, and I, these sort of etch in my mind, and then I can do the paintings from this. So I don't work from photographs. Um, OK, in front of me, it says, here's a this, here's this sketchbook. Fish like a chorus of hundreds from neon blue light in the dark grasses. Everything underwater here is rollicking and jubilant. The white sand with countless hieroglyphs of worm and snail trails, like an insistent message. No one here, a great time to be here. And I was at Blue Springs, and this is Gilchrist Blue Springs. So this is, again, it's, this is a Daniel Smallberg photo of Mark Long at Silver Glen. You know, what if we were the sub, you use time to sort of um, leapfrog around and look at your situation differently. What if we were the subject of a discovery centuries from now? What if somebody in 2413 looks back? It's the year 2413. The idea of the Floridan aquifer, like the land of Atlantis, is the stuff of myth and legend, as no one has seen either one these past 300 years. We now know that the aquifer was a planet embedded within our own, and some knew it then. I found this account of the myth of the aquifer in an ancient and dusty collection of printed information called a book. This book well reveals the wonder of this vanished world. The aquifer, like Atlantis, must be seen to be believed and is said that all manner of people, ships, creatures, and snails journey to this fabled place of La Florida. There are people joined with the water creatures in a fantastic realm of color and light. In fact, were they not liquid, it would seem an array of crystals had been deposited on the Earth's surface, and yet they are of a most transparent liquid and for others sustained by the rivulets that course from under our feet that emerge in these places called springs. And what is the aquifer, you may say? It exists not in the starry firmament or distant cosmos, but underneath our feet as the breath of the earth. In this land of La Florida, indeed, the people can go and join the waters. There, along paths, roads, byways, and woods of the land, the aquifer comes to the surface and may be entered at many points. It is even said, but touch the waters and you are connected to all the waters of the aquifer. And then you have to, be, to but descend by ladder or steps by, or by casting yourself in the waters to experience the watery realm. It just takes her longer to do this.
The people in the aquifer easily pass through the very pores of the earth through which it flows to the surface in a radiant display. It surfaces and frolics like a heart or gazelle in this felicitous spot that sinks into places known only unto itself in the bowels of the earth. The very fishes leap with joy and circle the people in the springs with ribbons of deep hue. All manner of strange and exotic creatures frequent this underground fountain, including the manatee, a kind of aqueous elephant, the gar, and the siren, and she has her own language and kinfolk and is scarcely seen. But now and then she's seen. So how can she be any more amazing than the creatures in the springs? <laughs> Jeez. And this, this helps to tell me, as one audience member said, the water is its own character and subject. You know, water is going to make bowling happen like it wants to. And, And when you travel to this land, you will feel there's no one to be found as they're all off swimming in this land of fountains. And when you do see the inhabitants, they will each proclaim loudly that they belong to this land of such and such a spring whose waters support and encircle any lands which surmount them. So this was a map found in a bottle. But you can see that Florida here is defined not by counties, but by this, all these different spring sheds, which in spite of its wildly colored nature is actually fairly accurate, I like to think. Then they return to the fountains that await them after they tell you which spring they're attached to. So the people are busy in the waters, and yet this strange race leaves behind many poems, writings, and the images they create to witness the beauties that flow beneath and penetrate the surface in a great display of geysers. Here's a fragmentary account, actually it's in Aquafarius, left to us of a world that we can scarcely imagine. When I dive in, my looping free dive takes me 30 feet below. Here it is silent, where the caramel sand feels warm, silky, sticky. Careening into the eelgrass, I surprise black minnows who pe peel off like fighter pilots. The bubbles from the eelgrass, like wisp of thinnest smoke, slowly rise to the surface. Each tip of each blade lisps its own Morse code. This leaf's bubbles are calm, measured, deliberate, like a string of pearls. This one pants shallow breath. This one blows smoke rings. This underwater architecture, these columns of bubbles, these minnows that minnows swim around and not through, each is different. This last blade unfurls the palest breath a pen to the surface. It's another spectator. Thank you.